Okay. Um, hi, welcome. This is uh, my talk. No, uh, this is the path. Well, really? A smattering of applause. I, I mean, I'm honored, but okay. okay, now it's just condescending. No, uh, this is my talk, uh, Path Well Traveled. It's a uh, few common mistakes that I've encountered with, with implementing SIM programs in, to various environments. Uh, I give a bit of a fair warning in advance here. First off, there is a minor seizure warning associated with this talk. There is a graphic later on that if you are prone to epilepsy or anything like they did with Pokemon way back when, please don't sue me. Uh, I have blinky things. And uh, also, on a more personal note, I tend to be a bit egotistical, as some of my coworkers can attest to. Uh, I am extremely talented. Not really, I'm also extremely self-deprecating. And uh, I have some experience with SIM, which, again, is all up to debate. I've been working in the industry for four or five years, specifically jumping in with monitoring technologies. And actually, I should probably be on my intro slide for that, which is, this is my name. Hey, I'm Nick Jacob. I'm at Mortius Prime on Twitter. I currently work at Hurricane Labs as their tuning SOC QA. Uh, engineer, I guess. We were never really clear on the title. But uh, a few things about me. I, Like I said, I've been working in the industry for about four years. I've been working with sims like QRadar, Alien Vault. I don't know, do you consider Security Onion a thing? It was a fun tool. It was like a Fisher-Price My First Sim. There's Alien Vault. I currently work, in, work with uh, Splunk, Enterprise Security, PCI, and... Uh, Hurricane's own in-house apps. In my free time, I'm a martial artist. I have been practicing most of my life now, actually. Uh, I do boxing and sword fighting as well. And those are fun things. And then uh, the other free time activities, I tend to be a snake wrangler and occasional pirate. And despite what Jason Street would have you believe, being a pirate is not a fallback from, being a, from failing to be a ninja. They're better. So. I would like to do that as well. It is fun to jump on people. But uh, normally, I would be delivering this talk with a bit more uh, enthusiasm. I apologize for that. Bit of a head cold. So the question is going to seem kind of out of place, but why is this goofy bastard so excited? Well, because I like talking about stuff like this. I like helping people improve on what they on the security controls that they've got in their environment. And I, help it, and I enjoy seeing a monitoring program succeed over simply continuing and failing to do anything. Which brings us to a few points. What is SIM? Well, that's what the acronym means, but under most circumstances, you're going to be discussing appliances, and there is there are quite a few of those. How many people here uh, work, in, work either as a consultant or internally and have a SIM appliance in their environment? Hot damn. That is actually a better ratio than I think I've ever seen given the, when giving this talk. Uh, do any of you guys have any particular favorites amongst them? Or do you all disdain the ones you work on? I don't actually know what people's opinions are anymore. Any in particulars? No. Splunk? Does SolarWinds count as a sim now? I thought it was a... Fair enough. Fair enough, because I've had... Q radar and solar winds butt heads like you wouldn't believe. It was spectacular. But uh, so we've got things like IBM's Q radar. You've got uh, Alien Vault. You've got Alien Vault's free version, which is I keep mixing it up. Is it OSEC or OSIM? OSIM. Thank you. Uh, you have enterprise security and the PCI apps on Splunk, like I said. But why tell you this? Well, frankly, because when I started out with this. I too had to learn it uh, because understanding that what a sim can be used for really tells you what you could, what kind of problems you'll be facing when you implement it. With with that level of understanding, you've got to, you know some of the variations in the appliances. Uh, there's also oh right logarithm, uh, uh, 
Dark Sight. That's the one I keep forgetting. Thank you. Come again? I've never gotten a chance to work with that one. I want to, though. Mostly because I haven't, and te people tend to have questions about the ones that I always haven't worked with. So we'll dive into a few of the mistakes that, we, that I've faced. And the uh, first one, the one that tends to stand up first and foremost, especially with people that have never dealt with SIM, which if you've been a consultant, you've probably had to deal with. That first mistake is believing a SIM to be a turnkey solution. So one, lovely Google stock images. Two, I've dealt with a lot of clients that believe simply by putting the SIM in place, they are suddenly secure and nothing will get to them. It's it, it's a common executive mentality. It's a common tool-based mentality. Obviously, it's an incorrect one. Otherwise, you people wouldn't be here. In order to get any value out of it, a SIM requires careful understanding and knowledge of what it can actually pull off. What you can do with, with Splunk Basic is different than what you can do with Splunk ES. Admittedly, you can build apps, but point being, the thing that most people tend to not realize is that a SIM is not insta-use, one-size-fits-all, or a small investment. I've seen a lot of people that want to throw the minimal amount of money for the smallest license of put insert name of SIM here and hope to get the same value as a multi-million dollar program that somebody's been developing over years. That doesn't necessarily work. In that same breath, you don't necessarily need that multi-million dollar investment if your company isn't really that big. You need to understand exactly what, what would be the optimal usage so that you can actually maximize how much money you're spending, preventing you from either uh, earning the, the scorn of your financial department or from, excuse me, from having to explain why you're not getting the maximum value out of it. So, and it's definitely not just a matter of throwing it, throwing money at that technology. It's, it, it's going to take time. It's going to take that understanding, which brings us to the second mistake, which is frankly the biggest one that I've ever encountered. Uh, that would be not applying the appropriate manpower. I've encountered, in, in the terms of being a consultant, which I've been for a number of years now, I've encountered situations where, because of the nature of how monitoring works, one of the problems a lot of consultant companies get into is, okay, we just need to alert when there's actually an event to alert upon. It's not actually an appropriate mentality, because then they question your value, which then leads them to, well, can't we have Joe the intern do your job for you? We can. But I guarantee you, Joe the intern is no longer working in the security space. And I'm very cynical about this point because I know Joe the intern isn't working in the security space. And it was disappointing because Joe was a good guy. So as I said, it was not a small investment. It requires time, understanding, and jolly cooperation. Ten points to anybody who gets that reference. So... There, there, there's one guy back there shaking his head. I'm like, where did I go wrong with this? Not even the crickets. I know, right? But, hey, I, I have niche interests, so to hell with the lot of you. So it's the time, not just for the installation, but for the tuning required in order to optimize the, your SIM platform. It's the understanding, knowing what exactly everything that goes on in the SIM does. What's going on in the environment? What is the environment look like? It's the cooperation between not just the security team, not just the monitoring team, not just that staff, but everybody that would be involved in this. You have to get buy-off from, hey, policy guys, if I see this kind of activity, what, what do I do? I've worked in a financial company where basically I was not the one that ended up chasing down people. I was the one that handed off, here's my report on what I found, sick the hounds on them, and... Strangely, that didn't happen either, which is another story. But having that cooperation between those teams, having that understanding of the environment and knowing what you're looking at is tantamount 
to optimizing the effectiveness of a SIM product. Delivering that amount of time, not expecting those instantaneous results. You will get some. One of the big things, and any SIM developer should press this point, when you plug an IDS or anything of that nature into your environment, you're going to see things that you've never seen before. You're going to have knowledge that you've never known existed in your environment. That's a good thing. You want to have the knowledge that you didn't know existed in your environment. But not all of it's going to be useful right away. Not all of it's going to be completely, it's not going to all be paid. -er. And for that level of cooperation, you got to remember, signing the wrong support can be as damaging as not assigning support. If you have people that want to sound the alarm, blow the horns, and chase down every single little thing right away, then they're going to rapidly become burnt out. They're going to rapidly become the enemy of everybody in the organization as they reveal every little secret in there. And frankly, how many people have dealt with coworkers that don't really like the fact that there is somebody that is lauding the fact that they're watching everything they do in their organization? Who actually, I, I, I'm realizing now that I'm in a room of people that all utilize SIM, that you guys are all in that or in that position. But my point is, how many of your coworkers like the fact that they know that you're looking over their shoulder? Exactly. That guy does. But nobody likes that guy. He's also really tall, so nobody really looks over his shoulder. But remember, like I said about Joe the intern, inexperienced help can be overwhelmed. It can be, it can be earnestly defeated by what they'll see, what they'll try to take on, and all the fights they'll have with all the other internal staff or external staff going on in the environment as they try to tackle every single issue they see right from the get-go. Which we'll go into on that note of following up on alerting. There's the not following up on alerting. When you plug a SIM into an environment, you're obviously going to see a ton of things. Frankly, it's going they're based all on correlation events, so there's tons of that going on everywhere. There's tons of things that look suspicious. There are servers that send email. There are things that people log into that, hey, turns out people occasionally get passwords wrong. And the SIM will more than likely alert on all of those. Now, understanding that 95 to 98% of those in the beginning are going to all entirely be false positives, there are certain ones you probably should be ready to take up on to follow up on. And this is one of the things that as a consultant you have to be aware of. Since you're going to be going to an environment saying, hey, what are some of the key problems that you've had so that we know where to start? Because we're going to have a lot of garbage to, be, to deal with right in the beginning. Having that idea of a starting point tells you where you should, what you should avoid and what you shouldn't avoid. For the record, not following up on the learning does have a fun counterpart, which is following up on too many things. When you're taking on too many events at once, you're going to end up making enemies, you're going to end up wasting your time, you're going to end up wasting everybody else's time. Before you know it, people stop returning your calls, people stop taking you seriously, and then they stop start wondering why they even spent the money on the technology, or you, in the first place. And this is a clear matter of perspective. Now this is a fun trick, and this is like one of the things about me being a snake person that I like about. Uh, it's a similar issue that we see in the security community is just a matter of perspective. This is the same toy. But if you've ever seen a picture of a guy with a really big fish that's holding it this way, it turns out the fish is only about yay big. In that same instance, you have to get people to see, to understand the story that you want them to hear. You have to get them to see the value in what you're doing and see the and see exactly what you want when you're delivering this report to them. So it may, what may seem like a big deal to you, what may seem like it's really valuable for you to follow up on, may not in the case of your superiors. There was uh, a company that I was working for where we were being bought out and a lot of people were about to lose their jobs. It's a financial company, as I mentioned before. We, well, me, I was watching the sim and I saw somebody sending 
about the right amount of data for, say, a quantitative report to their own file share. And, oh, this person was a quantitative analyst. That's what they did was did math stuff with money in order to make the company more money. Well, when we started talking to this, this wasn't enough, this wasn't enough, uh, this wasn't big enough for it to be a, uh, MP3 or anything of that nature. He tried claiming it was a podcast and nobody followed up on the fact that, no, dude, this, he's, he's doing this to like, what was it? End of the inter.net was the website he was uploading this file to. And it turned out to be exactly the same size as everything else that I had looked into in their file share for really sensitive data. I, it seemed like a big deal to me, but to the people that actually enforce the policies, not so much. And that was a big part, of, a big part of the problem with dealing with that secure, with that from the security standpoint internally. So you have to be able to prove the value in what you're showing them. And also, when the help desk starts out all nice and friendly with you, and you've sent them on so many wild goose chases, that they end up talking to you like this, you, you screwed up. Because when you send them after every little event, you're not one of the ones that helps look that up, they're going to start resenting you. You done goofed. You don't want every interaction with the help desk to look like a battle between the two of you. Cool as that may be, and I know we all want to get into sword fights in the office place. There, am I right? <laughs> but you don't actually want that between you and the help desk. You want to be able to utilize them as your harbingers of news and have them understand exactly when you speak to them, they got to take that seriously. So the fourth mistake of working with, of working with and tuning a sim is incorrectly loading loading it or configuring it, which also deals with one of the things I mentioned earlier, not knowing the environment. If you don't know exactly what's go what each server does, you don't, let me rephrase that, you don't need to know every single server. In some instances, that is damn near impossible. But if you don't have a good idea of what a general use of those servers are, you're going to be trying to do things with it, you're going to be trying to cover up information without having the facts behind it to justify covering it up. And one of the first things that a lot of companies that I've seen do, and do incorrectly, is they don't really deal with the flood of information. So they plug it in, forward all, all their logs over, turn it on, log in, and then deal with the flood of information, just like a punch to the face. There are a ton of alerts, there's a ton of logs, and there's a ton of noise. And it turns out you're not going to get much done when you're dealing with something like that. So one of the things that becomes a bit of a problem, and I've seen in some organizations, is when I say incorrectly configuring it, I specifically mean not tuning alarms. Now, when I spoke of my epilepsy warning earlier, I literally meant this because when I originally gave this talk, it was in a dark room with no lights and everybody just kind of had to deal with this. So I'm just going to go on that for a second because that's much more pleasant, I'm guessing. But if you're not quieting those alarms, if you're not doing anything to that, then you're not going to get the value out of the sim. You're not going to get, you're not going to bring down that noise to signal ratio. And that's one of the big things that's neat that needs to happen when you're uh, configuring that environment. Some of, the, some of the big issues are that you have so many alerts that none of them have any value, and your staff that you've got on your side that are interested in this blinky box that you invested in, which unfortunately most of them are, but regardless, this isn't actually a negative thing towards that they're going to rapidly become very disdainful of all of that noise, of the email alerting, of the constant 
chatter coming from it. And you're going to get a lot of this question. You're going to get a lot of, what what the hell am I? What? what? One of the things that I've asked for, or been asked for recently, actually, has been we deal with a SOC service. We have tickets that are specifically designed for us. Our alerts are designed to be read by our team. And they're like, oh, we want to have these sent directly to us. Uh, buddy, I don't, I don't think you quite know what you're asking for. Oh, no, no, do it. Okay, I sent them to us. Now, keeping in mind that we have a specific policy of how we handle these, how we fill the, out these reports, I literally ended up getting a lot of this question of, what the hell good are these alerts? What are you doing for us? Exactly what you asked me for, actually, but that's not the point. The point is, you don't know what you're looking at. You don't know how to read log file, syslog. You don't know how to do any of this, but you want to do see it. And that ends up causing a bit of a grading issue there. And uh, one of my favorite mistakes, actually, of a SIM program. I know I'm flowing through it kind of weird, but like I said, heckled. Is not utilizing the operational cap capability of a SIM. Now, when you had mentioned SolarWinds earlier, and the reason that I didn't, that I was surprised that that answer came up, was I've seen the two of those things actually butt heads, like I said. Uh, in this instance, somebody had misconfigured a SolarWinds, uh, SolarWinds instance, and it was basically DOSing our domain controllers because it was trying to do process monitoring so frequently that we had to add additional cores to all of our domain controllers to keep up. Now, luckily, on my end, because that was not my task, I was able to find out exactly what was going on and prove it using, uh, in this instance, I believe it was QRadar. But they also don't play nicely in the fact that if you have any any credentials or anything like that set up properly, you're going to see a lot of logins from things like SolarWinds. You're going to see a lot of problems like that. And if you're not using the SIM to chase down some of those issues, then you're missing out on a lot of the value of what you can do with an, with an appliance as powerful as a SIM tool. I mean, frankly, it, it ends up becoming like a, a, a moment of scarring truth where You've, you've seen some things. As I said, you're plugging in eyes into the entire network. You can see everything that's going on. And some of it is horrible. And some of it's kind of awesome. Some of it really helps tighten up the security posture of your organization, and some of it is kind of useless and should probably be ignored. But having that understanding can help you push for security changes that don't require further investment that don't require more technology, that just require a little better practice on the side of your engineering staff. In the end, even though you might butt heads with some of the ops team or some of the other engineers, got a little like, a nice little uh, interaction between the two of you guys. You guys can be friends, right? So, the sixth mistake is the one that I have the hardest time convincing people to follow up on and is the one that tends to actually get me personally in the most amount of trouble. And that's not testing on any of the tuning that has been performed. Now, one of the big things with this is I've had the courtesy of working with some amazing red teamers, the pen test teams and some of the organizations I've worked at are incredible. Am I right? So involve them. If, yeah, if I know the name means nothing to most of you guys because this guy doesn't come out here or anywhere really, but if you ever get the chance to meet Josh Little, pick his brain. Guy's pretty good. But make a game of it. And for those who don't know, because I actually had a coworker that didn't get this, this is D&D. &D. It's not a video game. As this is Dungeons and Dragons. He did not get that. That's what we were talking about playing at one point. But uh, make a game of it. One of the best meetings that I've ever had was Josh, Derek, and I sat in a room and said, 
well, this is how I would detect this. So that's easy. I do, I use this port to get through. All right, then we'll write this rule to watch for any traffic looking like this. There was, there was uh, an earlier talk. It was the noon slot in this room. Kirsten's? Was that who spoke about noon? Her talk was about exactly that. Taking, take some of the things. If you have access to a pen test team, if you guys have access to a community that does threat modeling, that does uh, CTFs, lay out some of those attack vectors and see what steps of those attacks you could actually improve your detection capabilities on. And even better, after you've done the tuning in your environment or in your client's environment, follow up and test it. This is really cool when you've got some interactive clients that are like, yeah, okay, cool, we've got these controls in place. All right, let's go through them and find out if they work. Now, admittedly, I, I try to be hopeful and I try to be an optimist and say they're not trying to screw you over and say, well, you didn't do your job right. I've had some clients that are really cool about, okay, this didn't work, but you know what? I think I know why. And they'll help you tweak those rules. They'll help you get their environment and work with you in order to actually get it to the best part, which is why I, I personally love threat modeling. I love doing things like that. I love sitting down saying, all right, this is an attack that recently happened. How did it occur? How did, uh, I'm blanking, uh, so-and-so get the who's a what's it. But go through those, figure out each step of the attack, and figure out what kind of detective control you could put in place that would utilize your sim that's already there, or could be logged and read by the sim in order to see it happening, and then try it out. It's easy to script these kinds of things. Hell, they do it in the training courses all the time for both IBM and for Alien Vault. So push those rules to the limit. I mean, really, push them to the limit. Also, if you've never had this done to you, it actually hurts. Uh, but it's fun. You got to, you've got to be willing to really go and see just what those thresholds are. Maybe, maybe it's not necessary to alert on every single failed login, but you, those ones at two in the morning are kind of weird, aren't they? Those ones from users that, us, like, obviously DA accounts, find out the ways that you can get around those alerts and see what you can do to alert on them. So be creative. I mean, you don't have to admit that you don't trust the person doing the tuning, but, you know, don't trust the person doing the tuning. It's... It's not just about that trust relationship. You want to know that you've got that integrity behind all the rules that you've been putting in. And you want to know that you're actually getting your money's worth from the sim that you've put all your money and time into. So, uh, yeah. I uh, kind of blazed through this because, unfortunately, something personal came up that I've got to answer a call right after this talk. So we're going to do a recap and I can do Q&A and I actually encourage dialogue between either myself, feel free to call me out on anything I say, or if you've had any instances of what you've been doing with, dealing with in your environment. I know one of the big things that caused a big debate when I first gave this talk was discussing sales engineers and how they'll tell you that SIM will solve everything from world hunger to the target crisis after it's already happened. So. Yeah, so the basic recap for the six uh, six concern mistakes that I've encountered commonly are as follows. Believing a SIM to be a turnkey solution, dealing with exactly what sales engineers, well, sales engineers, sales people will tell you. Sales engineers tend to be a little more honest, in my opinion. But not applying the appropriate manpower, not following up on alerting or following up on too much alerting, incorrectly loading it, not utilizing the operational capacity of the sim, and not testing the tuning that has been performed. So, do I, with that, do I have any questions? Do I have any comments? And I know I rushed through it, and I am really sorry. This, this was kind of out of my control, I'm afraid. Yes? 
So I've actually seen a mixed review of how to do that. And I, I tend to prefer to have a variety when I'm loading new sources into a sim, simply because I, even if it's not entirely accurate, simply because I may have like one mail server, one domain controller, a firewall plugged in, I'm at least getting a truer picture of what happens in a network than I do when I am getting just firewalls. And I've seen both situations where somebody wanted to load all their firewalls into it. Well, what can you see? Well, I, I can see permits and denies. And that tends to give you a bit of a muddy, muddied image of what your network actually looks like and also prevents you from tuning or reaching any kind of operational capability with the SIM, especially early, early on. Uh, in the cases of, and my specialization tends to be curator because I spent the most amount of time into it is what I was introduced to, but with the ability to organize based on source type, so if you've got a firewall, if you've got a mail server or anything of that nature, you can organize those and prepare the rules in advance, and it doesn't matter how many servers you've got in those categories. If they are categorized properly and organized properly, the rules can be interpreted correctly and it, and it just scales to the size of the organization. So I tend to prefer having a variety of log sources over having an abundancy of a single type, simply because it allows me to see a bit of a truer picture of how uh, traffic goes throughout the network. I don't. So, one of the big things that's been do that's been done, and good job on calling me out, like I asked. Build those use cases. I can't stress this enough. It helps whenever you're doing anything involving uh, anything involving a business to have the justification behind why you're doing th this, whether it's building a new rule, following up on a new alert, or why these detective controls are in place. Uh, so figure out, like I said, using those threat models, using those red team exercises, figure out how they got in, figure out what you can, con what you can change and what you'd be alerting on. And yeah, document, document, document. Have all this documentation in place so that you can follow up and have the justification behind what you're doing. Yes. Now that's actually a really good point, is almost, in fact I'd argue that all, no, a couple of these don't. But you're absolutely right, his statement was uh, there's an inverse version of number five where you've utilized the operational capability of the sim to the point where it's no longer actually act accurately collecting data. You're, cra you're crashing collectors, your things aren't parsing anymore, you're wasting cycles doing it. This goes back to one, Incorrectly, uh, incorrectly loading it because she said they're trying to do too much and they did not actually get scale to the size of the environment they needed to be in. And also, probably not applying the appropriate manpower, which would have helped with identifying this and tuning this out early on. If you're trying to see every single thing in the environment, well, sorry, that's, th that's going to be really expensive. That's going to be more money than most organizations will really want to apply into any kind of technological undertaking, let alone one that somebody is going to have to sit at and read all the time. Now, uh, as far as documentation for best, best practices for fine tuning, that tends to be a bit individualistic towards each environment that I've seen. Uh, some environments it would be far more appropriate for 
certain changes to be in place than there would be for others. And that tends to be my guiding light, which is why as a consultant, it tends to be figuring out what story that the security team needs to tell in order to get them to that point so that we can continue moving forward with tuning this up. So, yes. <laughs> yes, because I've I've see, I've had organizations that what was it? They wanted like a year's worth of uncompressed logs, and um, when we sat down to quote that out, they're like, "This would cost you X exorbitant figure." Like, oh, it it tends to be. Have you? Under what what circumstance it what circ bleh. this goes back to having a use case basically. If you have a justification for you needing that longer retention time, then you you can justify having it. But remember to work within things like compressed logs versus uncompressed logs, things that you can work within in order to save both yourself the trouble of having to justify a huge number on a PO and the headache of having to explain it, and also despite the fact that we would love to have perfect archives from the beginning of the organization to now, generally you very rarely ever need that. And I know I'm going, would get set up on, on a spike for saying we don't need to be able to look into the past. No, you do, but within reason. I mean, there is no way I'm digging myself out of this hole. You know what? I only learned two things really. And it's, I, I think you've just one stumped the chump. Yeah, I, I think he gets a prize. So, yeah, I'm not really... The point is, once you've dug yourself a hole, the first lesson is, you know, stop digging. So, thank you for that one, sir. I've ended with egg on my face. Yes? Generally, I've seen I've seen it where we can store the data uh, into a separate uh, form of storage. It would really require, I would argue, working with your SIM vendor to figure out what the best solution is. They're always going to argue you should buy more storage from us. But, I mean, having that understanding of, okay, if we've got this much storage, we could throw, throw these logs into there. But if you... If for any reason that you need, for a compliance reason, for an audit reason, for legal reasons, you need to go back into them, generally being able to optimize that is probably more on par with uh, saving money at that point if you need, if there's the actual justification behind it. Again, going back to having the use case behind everything that you can do. All right. I think that's it. Sorry. Right. <laughs> I really hate to say this. All I can say is good luck. Uh, with Whenever I've had to do that, we have multiple indexers we have to deal with. Like you're saying, it tends to be a cluster bleep of having a ton of having a bigger mess to deal with because of exactly what you're saying. I would rather have a much more normalized environment than having just all these separate indexers, but I tend to have to, to involve multiples on my own. So maybe the next time I give an iteration of this talk and I don't feel like crap, I'm going to be able to answer that question a bit more accurately. But, sorry. All right, I think that's it for me. I don't see any more hands.